All right, so we're gonna work through questions 30 through 33. A wild horse runs at a rate of eight miles an hour for six hours. Let Y be distance, okay? So if we were graphing this, my Y axis would be distance. All right, and I'm talking about miles. The horse travels for a given amount of time, X in hours. So X is gonna be time in hours. This situation can be modeled by a function, okay? So which of these describes the domain of the function? Well, we know that domain is x value. So we can go through and cross out all my y values because we're talking about domain. And then we can see that it says a wild horse runs at a rate of 8 miles an hour for 6 hours. My time limit is 6 hours. So from 0 to whatever 6 hours is, is my time limit. So going over here, this says my time is between 0 and in six hours so a would be my option number 31 to rent a canoe the cost is three dollars for the oars in the life preserver plus five dollars an hour for the canoe which graph models the cost of renting a canoe well let's think this is a linear function and so it um it has a constant slope, right? And for every hour, you're paying an additional $5. So this says you just pay $5 and you can go as long as you want. So D would not be our option. Another thing we need to look at is our Y-intercept. Our Y-intercept is actually the $3 for the initial cost. So we gotta buy those oars and that life jacket to even, um, to even go. This Y-intercept is five, this Y-intercept is zero, this Y-intercept is three. And three would be our correct option. All right, 32, Juan and Patty decide to see who could read more books in a month. They began to keep track after Patty had already read, read five books in that month. The graph shows the number of books Patty read for the next 10 days and the rate in which she read for the rest of the month. So let's analyze Patty. So I see that a perfect point would be right here, which means that for every five books, it took her four days so her slope would be five fourths okay and her y-intercept is five so her equation would be y equals five fourths x plus five okay now it says if Juan does not read any books before day four and he starts reading at the same rate as Patty for the rest of the month how many books will he have read by day 12 Okay, so he's starting here, and we want to know how many books he's read in 12 days. Well, we know in four days from here, he's read four books, because he's uh, five books, excuse me, because he's reading the same rate. So five books is, oh, excuse me, hold on, two dots. So right here, okay. And let's keep going. So after day eight, day 10, day 11, day 12, all right, so day 12 out here, he's read two or five more books. So he's up to here. So this point says that he has read 10 books. So that would be our option. Okay, and then number 33 says, which expression um, is equivalent to 121x squared? minus 64y squared. What's important is that we notice that these are the, the differences of two perfect squares. This is something that we need to recognize in algebra, that 121 is 11 squared, x squared is x squared, 64 is 8 squared, and y squared is y squared. So to do the difference of two squares, we have to take the square root of each of those. Okay, so let's look at the square root of each of these um, each of these portions. Well, the square root of 121 is 11, and the square root of x squared is x, okay? And then the square root of 8, or 64 is 8, and the square root of y squared is y. And then when we have difference of two squares, we have one that actually has addition as well, okay? So if we were to if we were to use box method and multiply all this out, our resulting factor would be that. Now, if you don't remember the rule with the difference of two squares, you could always use box method for each one of these answers and see which one results in um, in your original expression. So in our case, um, we're looking at option D. And again, it doesn't matter. These can be flip flop the plus and the minus. It doesn't matter what order those are in.